So welcome to this video. We've been to do this one for a while now. And um, here it is. This is going to be a binary logistic regression tutorial using the good old SPSS. So I'm going to start off with some going over some assumptions, introducing what this test is about, what how it works, and then going on to some example analysis. So if you want to skip the introduction assumptions lecture. So when you have four minutes, then just move on to the SPSS part of the video. Otherwise, sit tight, hang on, and uh, prepare for your mind to be blown. So what, what is a binary logistic regression? In a nutshell, logistic regression is multiple regression. Isn't everything. But with an outcome variable that is binary, so 1 and 0, yes or no, male, female, and predictive variables that are continuous or categorical. In its simplest form, this means that we can predict which of two categories, yes or no, survived, not survived, correct, incorrect, etc., etc. We can predict which of those two categories a person is likely to belong to given certain other information. So your independent predictive variables. There's some assumptions. Assumption one, your dependent variable should be measured on a dichotomous scale. So example, correct, coded as one, and incorrect, coded as zero. Two, you need to have one or more independent variables, which can either be continuous or categorical. Three, you should have independence of observations, and the dependent variable should have mutually exclusive and exhaustive categories. So these are not repeated measures done over the same participants over multiple time periods. If you wanted to use that, you would have to go and implement a multi-level model, which this video is not going over. Or there needs to be a linear relationship between any continuous independent variable and the logit transformation of the dependent variable. But five, this linear relationship mustn't be strong enough that collinearity exists. Right, those are the assumptions. So why is it actually called a logistic regression? The logistic transformation, which was originally suggested by Johnson in 1949, is applied to analyze responses that are restricted to a finite interval. So dichotomous, zero or one. The so-called bounded outcome scores. So they can only get one or the other. It's not an infinite range of possible scores. These bounded outcome scores often have a non-standard distribution. That's a J-shaped or a U-shaped distribution, which precludes, eliminates classical parametric statistical approaches. So classical parametric statistical approaches have the requirement that an approximately normal distribution has been this shown in the data. So applying the logistic transformation on a normally distributed random variable gives rise to the logit normal, the LN distribution. And this logit distribution can take on a variety of shapes, such as the dichotomous zero and one male and female distribution. So that is why we call it a binary one or two logistic, so it applies the logic transformation, allowing some type of parametric statistical analysis tests to be run. Right, so now that that's all sorted out. Okay, so in this data set, we have three variables, and it is essentially a data set of the survival rate of the Titanic. So, you know, that whole uh, cruise ship tragedy and Spielberg and all the rest of them. Well, anyway, our survived variable is the outcome variable. Um, zero represents no, they did not survive. One represents a survive, a, a participant, a, a person survived. We have their age, which is a continuous scale variable, and we have their uh, sex, so male or female. So let's just jump right into it. We want to go to analyze, then we want to go to regression, and then a binary logistic regression. 
we know that we have met the assumptions required of our outcome variable. It is a zero and one, yes, no. It's binary, essentially. He either survived or he didn't. We also have, we have met the requirements of having either a continuous and or a categorical predictor variable. I'm not going to be focusing too much on the assumptions of um, linearity and multicollinearity in this video. I'm just going to be showing you how to go forth and do the analysis and interpret the results. Right, so we have our dichotomous predictor or outcome variable, a continuous predictor variable, and a categorical, also dichotomous really, predictor variable of gender or sex. So let's go to analyze, regression, and binary logistic regression, because that is what we're doing. All right, so we got a little box up here. And we want to have our dependent variable as our survival rate. So survived, yes or no. Our covariate, our first covariate we're going to add is six. So we want to see if there's a difference between male and female survival rates. And we want to compare this model to one which has sex and age. So there's a difference between just sex or does it matter how old you are as well as what gender you are. Then let's have a look at the categorical box here because we do have a categorical variable. In this case, our categorical variable is sex. So let's add it in here and we want to see, leave it as an indicator because we want to see whether it's either one or the other. And we want to, our reference category is going to be, so it's for, as far from what I can remember is that males are coded as two and females are one, right? I can just double check that, but let's double check. Right, so males are two, females are one. So what that means in terms of our reference category is that it's all going to be compared against the males because it says lost, if I can remember correctly. So we're going to be comparing females two males that's what because it won't show both male and female scores in the model it will only show one and that that score is in reference to the male category it sounds a little bit complicated but when you see the model it'll make sense right so let's go to options so the hosma and lean show goodness of fit essentially just a, a goodness of fit model or good, goodness of fit statistic. We can, I would recommend getting the confidence intervals for the exponential coefficients. And we're not even doing stepwise, so it doesn't really matter. We can include constant in the model. So might as well just leave it as default, it doesn't change anything. I click continue. Method. I would only recommend using the enter method and then doing it exactly how you want to. Essentially, backward goes from the least significant to the most significant and forward goes from the most significant to the least significant, one way or the other, anyway. But I wouldn't recommend using them. I would recommend using only enter and entering your variables exactly how you want to enter them and so you have a good basis or good reasoning for entering them the way you want to. Right, with that in mind, let's click OK and have a look at the results. This is just to make sure that your all your data is being accounted for. So you have N800, our dependent variable encoding. We have zero and one, so survived and not survived. Our categorical variable codings, so we have males, females. Male, females are now coded as one and males as zero. And let's go down. So block one, method enter have our model. So this is main block one is just sex, it's a male or female. Model summary, we have our Nelgikaki R squared of 0.36, so about 30, essentially sex accounted for 36% of the survival rate. That's what it's telling us. 
p value represents something called the log odds. And you can see six two parentheses, one, and that one is our reference category. So that one is females, because females are coded as one and males are coded as two. So this by itself is somebody, somebody somewhat tricky to interpret, but if we apply an exponential transformation, which is the reverse of a logic transformation, we get our odds ratio. And this is what the exponential B value here represents. Now this means, because our females is our reference category, this means that the odds ratio for females surviving over males is 12.689. So the odds of a female surviving over, over a male, just for the fact that they're being a female in the Titanic, is 12.689. And this value is um, very highly statistically significant. So if you, were to, if you were to count all the zeros that existed between here and an actual number, it would be around 16, 16 zeros. And the 95% confidence intervals is just the, the possible range of where this exponential B would fit in if this data was true in the actual population. Right. So the reference category is important here because that shows you the odds of one category having belonging to a certain outcome over the other one. Right, and here we go. Here's our block two, and our method is always going to be enter. It should be. I would definitely recommend only using the enter method. And this one is going to be looking at age in addition to sex. So overall, the, um, the Nolgikoki R squared did not really increase with the addition of age, which kind of hints that it's not really that significant. But let's have a look. The Hosmer and Show test is statistically significant. That suggests that the data is a good fit for the model that we're trying to, um, or the model is a good fit for the data. If it's not statistically significant, then your R squared is likely to be quite low as well. Classification table, this is just uh, from the data and the model and incorporated. What are the chances that they would accurately predict based on gender and age, whether somebody survived or not? And that has a, a, an overall percentage rate of 78.9. So pretty good. Almost an 80% um, accuracy in classification of survival rate. And again, most of this is because of gender. Age itself with a log odds of negative 0 0.4004 and significant level of 0 0.515 and uh, an odds ratio of essentially one, which means there's no difference between one or the other, is not significant and does not add much to the model. So again, it's mainly, mainly gender that plays a role. And that is it for binary logistic regression. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any comments, drop them below and I'll have a read. If you found the video helpful, give it a like, maybe subscribe to the channel.